Hello and welcome to Aging is for Everyone. I'm Laura Mandello and I'm your host for the show. It has been a long cold winter and maybe it's time <laughs> to shake some of that out, get out and about and see what's going out going on here in Buffalo, New York. Lots of great stuff to talk about on today's show. One excellent event that's coming up that may have you maybe wanting to stay home and read a little bit is the American Association of University Women's Annual Sale. And here to tell us about that sale is Betty Preble, and she's the president of the Buffalo branch of the AAUW. Welcome, Betty. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much. Now, th yeah. this is, this is, event has been going on for a long time. Tell me this a little is, bit about the, the sale. This is our 60th annual book sale and we have been in a variety of locations um, for the past couple of years we've been at the Sheridan and Eckert Plaza this year we're going to be at the Burlington Plaza on Niagara Falls Boulevard it's right off the 290 mm -hmm. it's easy to get to and there's plenty of parking and we will have lots of books that's what I understand <laughs> yes. I, I understand it's pretty much a book blowout for people who really love love to read it, just a little background tell us a little bit about the American Association of University Women who are you you know what do you do do, what, what is your mission? Yeah, AAUW, the American Association of University Women, is college graduates, men are eligible for membership. Uh, the organization has been around since 1881. The Buffalo branch has been around since 1890. We're coming up on our 125th anniversary. We have about 200 members. Um, our mission is equity for women and girls through advocacy, education, philanthropy, and research. Mm -hmm. We do lots of scholarships. The national organization is one of the largest sources for funding for women in graduate school. This year alone, we've given out uh, over three and a half million dollars. Wow. The Buffalo branch itself has its own scholarship program and close to $50,000 was spent on uh, scholarships and projects throughout the community. Uh, last year. In addition, we have some funding from some generous members who have passed on and left us uh, money to be used for scholarships. Okay, so and this book sale is a big part of your scholarship it program. It certainly <laughs> is. Um, we've had, we have well over a hundred thousand books already and wow. um, there will be more because once we're in the site, people will be bringing them. Last year we brought in about sixty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. We sort these books starting in September. We do take the summer off because it is a lot of work. Right. But then starting in summer, we sort books at the Kensington Bailey Housing Services uh, building. Two mornings a week and just keep on piling up these boxes of sorted bo books mm -hmm. and getting ready to sell them. Right, and where do you get your donations? They are all contributed by people in the community. We do get leftovers from library book sales and so forth, mm -hmm. but people decide it's time to clean out those bookshelves, and so they call and just tons of books come in. Right, yeah. might be good timing with spring cleaning too. That would be <laughs> wonderful. We will be in the book sale site and ready for donations there on April 7th. Mm -hmm. And we will be there every day during the week and probably one evening a week and Saturday mornings. Great. So people are welcome to bring them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. tell us um, when is the sale and how does the sale work? Okay, the sale is from May 28th until June 1st. It's a five day sale. Mm -hmm. uh, the first day, it costs $20 to get in in the beginning of the day, and there's lots of book dealers who come in. And then okay. the middle of the day, it's $10, and then towards the end of the day, it's $5, as the books are getting picked over. Okay. And then it's a dollar each on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Those days were open from 9 a.m. until 8 p.m. Right. And then Sunday is free, and that's usually bag day, and will be open from noon until five. Okay, so, and there's probably still plenty of books left by Sunday. Oh yes, <laughs> they go out by the bag load. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So for your dealers, those are probably people who are reselling? Reselling yes. on eBay or? Well, or eBay book and stores. the bookstores mm -hmm. in the area, and we have people coming from Maryland, wow. from Massachusetts, 
you know, our book sale has gotten to be well known. Wow. Now, do you get any rare books or anybody, sometimes people may donate first editions or things like that? We do. We have a special collectible section mm -hmm. um, where there, well, there's two types of things. There's the newer books. Um, and those sell for a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, collectibles that people have, and we have people who look them up on the internet and say, okay, how much should we be able to get for them? And we don't charge that much. Right. But in general, the typical hardcover books will be a dollar each, mm -hmm. and the paperbacks, 50 cents. Okay, so it's, it's a good deal. And the children's books are generally less. Right. Now, are there any particular types of books that you, you're you looking to get donated? Um, Almost any, any genres that are more popular than others? Everything sells, except, except. textbooks <laughs> and encyclopedias and Reader's Digest condensed books. Those are all wonderful things, but they don't sell. Okay, so you don't particularly we don't want, want those. donations <laughs> of those. <laughs> of those. <laughs> now, if somebody is interested, so basically it sounds like they can, somebody can just grab all their books that they want to donate and they can come and drop them off. That's right. To your site. Yes. We had one young woman come with her father last year and brought a truck full of almost completely brand new books. Wow. He was lonely, sitting at home, and so he'd order books on the internet, wouldn't even read them. Oh my. And so this whole truckload of new books came in, and I offered her a bookmark so she, you know, they could come back for the sale, and she said, no, we're not getting any more. <laughs> no more books for dad. That's right. No more books for dad. Now, do yes. you have people who come back every year to, to shop? Oh, yes. We um, have a mailing list, and mm -hmm. towards the early part of May, we'll be sending out postcards to 3,000 people who have been here for the last four years. Uh-huh. Great. Great. Yeah. So basically, uh, just reiterate what the, the dates again. And, and May 28th through June 1st, uh, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., mm -hmm. Wednesday through Saturday, and then noon till 5 on Sunday. And your site again? The Burlington Plaza on Niagara Falls Boulevard, just south of the 290. Okay, sounds like it's gonna be a great sale again. We I hope so. Wish you all the luck in the world. It's, it sounds like a great event and benefiting a really good cause yes. as well. You know, scholarships are very important. Yes. So. Thank you so much for being with us, Kay. Betty. Thank you. And thank you for being with us. We'll be right back with more Aging is for Everyone. Welcome back to Aging is for Everyone. We're talking about fun things to do and see in Buffalo, New York. 
winter's over, let's hope, let's shake a little bit of it off and, and, and get out there and see what's going on. Here to tell us about a really great event in Allentown, First Fridays, is Parrish Gibbons, and she is the promotions representative for the Greater Allentown Gallery Association. Gaga. Yeah, thanks Welcome. for having me. Yeah. <laughs> great to have you here, Parrish. Mm -hmm. um, first Fridays, I mean, people may have heard a little bit about them, but tell us, tell us what are the First Fridays? Yeah, um, First Fridays might not be new to everyone. Um, it is uh, across the country, a lot of cities do it. The First Fridays Gallery Walk in Buffalo, however, takes place in Allentown. Um, it's uh, an evening, it takes place every first Friday of the month and mm -hmm. so in the evening uh, restaurants, businesses and galleries stay open later. They have events, they have specials, anything to really bring the community down to Allentown. Right. So right. that takes place every first Friday of the month. Great, great. And, and I think people are you know, looking for things to do, especially free things to do sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the benefits of First Fridays is that it's free. You know, mm -hmm. you just go down, you explore. Um, a lot of the opening receptions are uh, have complimentary wine and hors d'oeuvres, so it's always a nice kind of right. night out with the with the group. Um, and what's really convenient about Allentown is everything's so close. You know, um, that is why it's called the First Fridays Gallery Walk. Mm -hmm. um, you can just kind of walk down Allentown and there's so much to see and everything's really connected um, and when we started it was just kind of started as a couple galleries uh, indigo um, studio heart buffalo big print and over the years we've incorporated more of allentown um, and tried to represent other sectors so we have the young center on franklin we have starlight studio on delaware mm -hmm. so we're really trying to show off what allentown in general has to offer other than just allen street right right and people can kind of get a feel for for more than you know more what's going on in the art world maybe in Buffalo because it's local artists generally. Absolutely, yeah. Um, they bring in a lot of local artists mm -hmm. and uh, with all the universities and colleges um, within Buffalo we have a great young a group of artists that mm -hmm. are always looking for somewhere where to have their either their senior shows right. or just their first shows. So um, even if you think you're kind of familiar with Allentown, there's always something new to come check out, which right. is what makes it kind of so special. Right. And what are some of, uh, you know, you mentioned some of the organizations. Do you have a set group of galleries that participate or does it change by month? Um, anybody who kind of considers them to be a business owner in Allentown, we invite to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll mention now that our, our website, firstfridaysallentown.com is such a great resource and mm -hmm. it's a community managed website in the sense that any business owner, restaurant owner, gallery owner can log on, create an account and um, can promote what's going on on their first Friday. So whether they want to promote a band that's playing at their at their restaurant or at their bar right. or a business promoting that they have some new items in or galleries promoting an, uh, an opening reception, mm -hmm. they can log on there and promote themselves. And it's a great resource for people who are looking to find what's in Allentown, you know, this first Friday. Right, right. So if somebody's interested in, you know, the first Friday's coming up, you know, what exhibits are going to be at which galleries, yep. where might I want, they could sort of pre-plan yeah. what they wanted to Our do. Our website is great. It actually has a, we utilize Google Maps right on there. So you, you get a nice bird's eye view of all of Allentown and you can say, I want to go to this place, I want to go to this place, I want to go here. You can really map out your evening and it's really great. Right. It sounds like it. So what are some of the events that have happened during First Fridays, like some of the, the shows that maybe stick in your mind? Um, I, I love a lot of uh, what Hall Walls does and that's definitely off the beaten path. Um, they have a beautiful exhibit in the back and they have a lot of great concerts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, even Paza Art House recently just had a uh, an exhibit of Lori Tanner's, which was really wonderful. She makes really beautiful artwork, and that was up for several months, and it brought in a lot of new interest. And Paza Art House also does kind of jazz nights, so that's really fun as well. It sounds like it. Yeah. Sounds like it. Tell us a little bit about um, Gaga, about the Greater Allentown Gallery Association. Yeah, um, yeah. Gaga, as we go by, is a just a really group of. Um, uh, gallery owners really. Mm -hmm. I started attending because I was connected with Starlight Studio and Art Gallery um, which is a project of the Learning Disabilities Association so I kind of that was kind of my way in and mm -hmm. it really is just a, a group of gallery owners eager to bring more to Allentown mm -hmm. um, and so they kind of started in, in about 2009 uh, 
as time went on, we became a committee of the Allentown Association, which is a 501c3, which gave us this umbrella to apply for some fundings from some grants, which have helped to uh, really revamp our first Fridays. And it gives right. us the ability to work with other organizations in Buffalo, like Squeaky Wheel. We've hired them before to do some installations and some video projections on buildings in Allentown, nice. and even just hired some musical acts and, and so forth to come spice it up a little bit. Great, great. Now, do you find that um, as is the, the First Fridays are, are, are they growing? Do you find more people are learning about them? Or, yeah. or is there a good word of mouth about them? I think so. And I think that, um, you know, with, with many things, social media has made such a difference. You know, we are on Facebook. Our galleries are on mm -hmm. Facebook. And so we're all on there really trying to engage people. And um, in Buffalo, you know, with the weather, you'd think that things kind of died down and that people wouldn't want to be walking from gallery to gallery. But, you know, our one of our best successful First Fridays is our December one and when some of the coldest months. Um, our first Friday in December is our holiday first Friday mm -hmm. and we will close down the street and we will hire a horse and buggy to take our walkers up and down. We'll have a tree lighting, you know. We're always trying to bring, you know, new ideas to bring in new people. Nice, nice. And it gives people a chance maybe if they're thinking about art as a gift as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Uh, what a great place <laughs> to holiday shop, even for, you know, holidays aside, any type of year. Right. Um, yeah, you can always find something new down in Allentown. Right. I think sometimes people may not realize that as, you know, if you if you want to come out to First Friday, you yeah. may be able to, you know, really get exposed to some, some artwork that you might yeah. be interested in purchasing. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, I just always have to say, you know, one of the good and bad things about Allentown, they say, is that it's ever-changing. You know, businesses come and go. And it makes it always a fresh experience. So whether you think you're kind of well rehearsed with the city, um, come down because there's always something new to check out. Right, right. Yeah. And that may be for somebody, you know, we have, may have viewers who haven't been in Allentown in a while. Oh, yeah. Maybe they're a little afraid to, to venture out there. <laughs> yeah, come on down. Yeah, and um, yeah, like I said, all the galleries are always on social media and on Facebook. So if it, even if it's not a first mm -hmm. Friday, check out some of the galleries just during the week. Or if mm -hmm. you're ever kind of down there for lunch, you know, check out some galleries. Right, right. Yeah. I think people will be surprised at how many wonderful galleries oh, yeah. people have. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you for being with us, Parish, and yeah. telling us about First Fridays. Thank and you for having hopefully me. Hopefully we'll get some folks to go out and, and, and check out some of the great events that yeah, are coming I up. Yeah, I hope so. This was it, It's time to get out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with more Aging Is For Everyone.
back to Aging is for Everyone. We're talking about places to go and things to do in Buffalo, New York today. And the West Side Bazaar is a place that you do not want to miss. Here to give us some information on the bazaar are market manager Michelle Holler, Ben Bissell, who's from the Westminster Economic Development Initiative. And we also have a guest who is a one of the market, uh, one of the people who sells her wares at the market. So welcome yeah. to you all. It's great to have you Hello. here. It's great um, to be here. Thank you. First, just give us a basic background. What is the West Side Bazaar? Where is it? And why would people want to go there? Uh, the West Side Bazaar is located on 25 Grand Street. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a market that holds both food shops and both retail, jewelry, and art. We have over 16 food vendors, or um, 16 vendors, and um, we have vendors that are from all over the world. Mm -hmm. So people from Burma, Thailand, Nepal, Ethiopia, and it, each shop is really unique. Uh, they sell uh, clothing, jewelry, and art that could come from either they make on their own or that come from their country. So maybe they have family that still live there mm -hmm. and they send it. So it helps both the family back home and it helps the shop owner here in Buffalo. Right. So it's a really special place. Yeah. It, it sounds like it. And it's yeah. been, um, tell us a little bit about the history of the bazaar. How did, how did this start? Mm -hmm. I mean, the West Side is, is like the home, was the original home of like the immigrant Italians and yeah. then now it's all kinds of immigrants from all over the world. So tell us a little bit about the history. Yeah, so it's very exciting. Um, I'm actually the executive director of Weedy, which is the organization that runs the bazaar, and mm -hmm. we um, created the bazaar. The bazaar is a very exciting place. Um, it was actually in the vision of an individual called John, named John Perry, and it was actually a group of stakeholders from the west side, people who were interested, concerned citizens about the west side and where it was going, um, and saw a lot of potential. And so uh, one individual came up with the idea, and the idea just kept exploding and more, um, more.